Ghana receives 160 tons of textile waste every day from the West. The country, which has a rich history in textile manufacturing, is now fighting on the two fronts of imports of foreign fabrics and second-hand clothes. The country has thus chosen to bet on tradition and the Made in Ghana label. In 2004, the government even had the idea of establishing a casual Friday wear initiative to encourage the production and purchase of locally made clothes and to promote Ghanaian textiles and its fashion industry. Our journalists John Owotwi and George Ibo Saki want to meet these exceptional tailors, a story of resilience and resistance of a sewing sector that is still very much alive. This Friday wear initiative brought a boost in business for local dressmakers and tailors as the wearing of wax print fabrics, which was widely deemed as out of place in formal settings, became a more universally accepted style of clothing, bringing a higher value to the production and use of these garments. A move that was intended to revive the local textiles industry, which employed some 3,000 people, a significant fall from some 30,000 in the 70s. But with an increase in demand of the locally produced clothes, following the Friday Wear initiative, local production struggled to meet the supply. This led to a rise in the price of the local fabrics and opened up an avenue for the infiltration of the cheaper imported fabrics or counterfeited fabrics. Sarah Agri was introduced to the textile trade as a child by her grandmother. She currently sells both locally produced textiles and foreign counterfeited fabrics. I decided to start the uh, textile business, but it came to a time the uh, Ghanaian print, it was expensive, so people couldn't afford it. So I made up my mind to join the um, high target, that is the foreign ones. And that one too is cheaper. So people started buying that one. And as for the GTP and printers like that stuff, when somebody is uh, going to marriage ceremony or funeral, then they buy the GTP because that is a traditional cloth. GTP, ATL and Printex are actually the name of three of the four major garment factories that survived the decline of the sector in Ghana in the early 2000s. By extension, they gave their name to locally manufactured fabrics used for ceremonial or customary activities. Wooden, however, is of francophone origin and has become accepted for contemporary use. These days, African print garments are worn daily in many variations in both formal and informal settings. The dressmakers sometimes cannot keep up with the orders, especially during the periods leading up to festive occasions. Some patrons also have to travel long distances to get their dresses made because of their individual taste and styles. Philomena Appiah regularly has to travel out of town to get her dresses made for her. I was looking for a reliable uh, person to sew my clothes, but I couldn't get one until my sister introduced someone for me at Salt Pond to go there and sew my dress. So when I go there, I see the woman too is very serious to sew the dress for me. That's why I just traveled from Cape Coast to Sopon to get a person to sew my dress. Artisanal tailors like Emmanuel Young Colhams, a third generation tailor and IT student, are all thankful to the family business they can depend on. My dad took over him and I've also taken over my dad. One thing that I've learned from my granddad is that whenever he sews dresses for someone, he makes it look unique in a way that he looks at your personality, your stature, and he sews the, the dress to fit you perfectly. Ebenezer Ajay Mansa took over his father's once sought after tailoring shop that specialized in hand sewn suits, which was on the brink of collapse and has struggled to keep it afloat. But although he produces some fine garments, businesses like his face the threat of being pushed out of operation by yet another obstacle, cheaper, 
imported second-hand clothing from China, the US and UK has flooded the Ghanaian market, suffocating the local industry. This shop is my father's shop. He's the one who taught me this work. What, what I learned from my father, I'm just continuing. At first, we got some uh, pastors, lawyers, uh, big men from the uh, ministries, all the time bring their work here, suit here to, so that we sew for them. And now, things are not like first. But Professor Asma sees the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, the FCFTA, as another opportunity to reverse the decline in the clothing and textile industry. The agreement provides a bigger market for our locally produced goods and he encourages entrepreneurs to get themselves prepared by undergoing skills training and apprenticeship programs. High time we move away from the job of I'm going to school to work in the bank and to work in the ministries and so on. This sector is a big one. And now that the African free trade area is coming on board, I believe it gives us a huge opportunity now, not only to target the local market, but to target the rest of the African continent. And this is where I see the, pot uh, the potential of this industry. With the estimated steady rise in imports of cheaper, inferior clothes and second-hand clothes into the country from $115 million in 2002 to $250 million in 2019, the trend in the declining fortunes of Ghana's local textile and fashion industry is unlikely to change. Reducing the local industry to an artisanal scale in a country that needs to make major interventions in getting the masses of its youth in gainful employment.